in this module we will be learning how to perform a lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture is an invasive procedure where the cerebrospinal fluid is drawn from the spinal canal for diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Quinky first performed the lumbar puncture in 1891 to relieve increased intracranial pressure in children with tuberculous meningitis. Indications to perform a lumbar puncture are both diagnostic and therapeutic. Diagnostic indications include diagnosis of infectious diseases of bacterial, tubercular, viral or fungal etiologies, inflammatory processes like multiple sclerosis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, and malignancies which include CNS metastasis of leukemia through cytology, injection of contrast media for myelography or cisternography. Therapeutic indications include spinal anesthesia or analgesia for antibiotic administration with vancomycin and gentamicin, for intrathecal chemotherapy with methotrexate in leukemias, and to reduce raised intracranial pressure and monitor CSF pressures in diseases like cryptococcal meningitis. Before performing a lumbar puncture, the possibility of raised intracranial pressure has to be considered, and it is important to perform an NCCT head and a fundoscopy before the procedure. NCCT head suggestive of hydrocephalus or fundoscopy suggestive of papilledema are contraindications to perform a lumbar puncture. Thrombocytopenia with a platelet count less than 50,000 or an INR of more than 1.4, severe bleeding diathesis, suspected spinal epidural abscess, infection at the site of injection, or severe spinal deformity are other contraindications. Antiplatelet therapy with aspirin and clopidogrel are not contraindications. Anticoagulation with warfarin has to be stopped 5 to 7 days prior to the procedure. Anticoagulation with low molecular weight heparin at therapeutic doses has to be stopped 24 hours prior to the procedure and those with prophylactic doses have to be stopped before. 12 hours of the procedure. It is important to take an informed written consent from the patient by explaining the technique, the benefits of the procedure and the possible complications associated with the procedure. The equipments that have to be assembled before performing the procedure include the spinal needle, sterile sample bottles, sterile gauze piece, sterile drapes, sterile sponge holding forceps, local anesthetic solution, and the antiseptic solution. The procedure has to be performed in aseptic conditions. The performer has to scrub his hand and forearms with soap and water, wear sterile gown, gloves, and goggles. To perform a lumbar puncture, the position of the patient is very important. The patient has to be placed in the lateral decubitus position at the edge of the bed with the spine parallel to the edge of the bed, hips and shoulders vertically perpendicular to the bed. The patient in general has to attain a flexed posture with the knees flexed on the abdomen and the head flexed with the chin as close to the chest as possible. Once the position has been obtained, the puncture site has to be discerned. The puncture has to be done below the level of L1 vertebra because the spinal cord ends at this level. To determine the site of puncture, an imaginary line called the Zetufius line is drawn, joining the highest points of the iliac crest, and this line passes through 
the spinous process of L4 vertebra and the interspace above it or below it which is the L3 L4 or L4 L5 is chosen for performing the lumbar puncture. As illustrated by this figure, the curves represent the iliac crest and an imaginary two fierce line is drawn at the highest point of the iliac crest and it passes through the L4 vertebra. So a point above or below is chosen to perform the lumbar puncture. Once the point has been selected, the site has to be disinfected with Pobidon iodine as shown in the video. The area has to be scrubbed from the center to the periphery. And once the site is scrubbed with povidone iodine, it has to be wiped off again from center to periphery to avoid chemical arachnoiditis. Before performing the lumbar puncture, the resident has to be aware of the anatomy through which the spinal needle passes. The spinal needle as shown in the figure passes through the following layers. The skin, the subcutaneous tissue, then it pierces the supraspinous ligament, then the interspinous ligament between the spinous processes, piercing the ligamentum flavum it reaches the dura matter and enters the dural space which contains the roots of corda equina and the cerebrospinal fluid. Now let us see how to perform a lumbar puncture. A midline approach is preferred. The lumbar spine is palpated and the vertebra is identified as illustrated previously. As previously told, a level below L1 has to be chosen to avoid injury to the spinal cord and the interspace between the two spines that is L3, L4 and L4, L5 is commonly chosen to perform the procedure. The puncture site is infiltrated with local anesthetic that is lignocaine. The spinal needle is passed parallel to the floor in the midline of the selected space. The needle is directed cephalid towards the umbilicus as the spinous processes are inclined, inclined cordially. The bevel of the needle has to be facing upwards. The needle pierces the following anatomical structures as previously illustrated and the needle passes approximately 4.5 to 5.5 centimeters from the skin before it reaches the dural space. Once the needle reaches the dural space, a giveaway feel is felt and a free flow of CSF is encountered at the hub of the needle. If the needle encounters any bony surface, then the needle should be redirected after retracting it. A CSF manometer can be attached to the needle hub and CSF pressure measured while asking the patient to extend his legs. Up to 40 ml of CSF can be collected safely for various diagnostic purposes. The stylet should be replaced before the spinal needle is removed as this can reduce the risk of post lumbar puncture headache. This video shows of how a lumbar puncture is performed.
the space has been selected as previously described and the needle passes through the interspace once the needle traverses through the dura giveaway feel is felt and a free flow of cerebrospinal fluid is seen once the procedure is over a small sterile dressing is placed on the site and a pressure dressing is not required the patient is advised to stay prone for half an hour to one hour and to increase oral fluids over the next 12 to 24 hours patient is assessed for any adverse reactions to the procedure the csf specimens are labeled and sent appropriately to the respective laboratories patient is instructed to observe the lp site for any signs of bleeding or infection post procedure analgesics could be prescribed if required bed rest is comfortable than being ambulant but prolonged bed rest does not reduce the incidence of post lumbar puncture headache documentation of all that has been done in the procedure is very important for medical legal purposes it has to be done in the case file documentation of pre-treatment evaluation and any abnormal physical finding should be recorded procedure notes has to be systemic systematically noted which includes recording the date and time indication for the procedure the lumbar puncture site patient position type and size of the needle used amount of csf withdrawn specimen sent to the lab any complication that the patient has suffered and the csf pressure has to be measured and documented random blood sugar during the procedure has to be checked which helps in correlating it with csf glucose all procedures are associated with some complication or the other the common complication associated with lumbar puncture is a post lumbar puncture headache the symptoms of post lumbar puncture headache develop within 24 hours of the lumbar puncture and it resolves by up 10 days typically there is relief of pain on lying down supine the volume of fluid removed is not a risk factor for developing the headache and it can be reduced by using a smaller bone needle of 22 gauge and a traumatic needle can be used maintaining a supine posture oral or iv fluids and symptomatic management with analgesics and antiemetics are the first steps to conservative management of post lumbar puncture headache infections bleeding cerebral herniation minor neurological symptoms such as radicular pain or numbness late onset of epidermoid tumors of the thecal sac and back pain are other complications it is very important for every resident to know how to do a cell counting in the csf because the cell counting has to be done immediately within 30 minutes of the procedure to avoid cell disintegration and the materials that are required are available in the side lab in the second floor teaching block and all that is required is a new bus chamber turks fluid pipette and a microscope so this is the new bus chamber and if you can see the depth between the cover slip and the stage is 0.1 mm this is important in calculating the volume csf and turk fluid are mixed in equal proportion and charged into the new bus chamber as shown and the wbcs and rbcs are counted in the boxes marked with their respective alphabets wbcs in the four large squares at the corner and rbcs in the central square so this is how the rbcs look under 40x of the microscope and these are the lymphocytes 
under the microscope. So if you can see the length and the breadth of each large square is 1 mm. So the area is area so the area is 1 mm square and the depth as we know is 0.1 mm. So the total volume becomes 0.1 millimeter cube. And since we are counting four large squares, the total volume becomes 0.4 millimeter cube. So the formula to calculate the number of cells per microliter of CSF is number of cells counted in the four large squares multiplied by the dilution factor divided by the volume. So dilution factor is taken as 2 because we are we are using equal quantities of CSF and Turks fluid and the volume is 0.4 millimeters cube as already calculated. So it comes down to the following formula. So the total cells per microliter of CSF is number of cells into 5. So if we count 20 cells in the 4 large squares, all that the resident has to do is multiply it with 5 and the total cells he has counted are 100. So I hope all of you have become confident in performing lumbar puncture at the end of this module. Thank you.